Oh, hey, it's me. I just want to say real quick up front that I had some issues with my audio with this episode, so we had to use my backup track from Zoom. I'm sorry this happened, and we'll try to prevent it going forward. So with that, um, let's roll the track. You're listening to Bitch Said What with Cooper and Sabrina, a podcast by thirsty bitches for thirsty bitches. In today's episode, we talk about game shows, standardized tests, unhealthy relationships, and the pain of crushes. So stick around to learn our hot takes on local news stations. There we go. And I'm recording. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Oh, you know, living the dream as always. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Um, finally kind of staying busy, um, living a pretty good life. Happy with work, what I'm doing, where I'm at. Oh, that's exciting. Gotta be happy and fulfilled in life, you know? Yeah. I feel that. Well, you know... The, we recently had a full moon in Virgo, so I'm just like, you know, at my prime right now. Mm-hmm. Still, no, you're not wrong. Still coming the moon off that last high. Night- <laughs> of course. The moon last night was so cool. As I was driving home from work at like 1230, I look over and the moon is just like huge and it's partial and it's red. So pretty. Love that. Massive chunk of moon. Well, because, you know, sometimes the moon is so small and you're like, what a little bitch. I don't really understand, like, what makes the moon seem bigger or smaller. But sometimes, like, you look up, it's like, you know, where did you go, moon? Why are you so far away? So because of my astronomy class, I'm learning a lot about that. I have Mm -hmm. a full, like, three pages in a book that explain it with, like, graphs and everything. Can I explain it back to you? No. But it has to do with like, it's um, it's uh, I don't even know how to say the word. I want to say like, it's ellipse, but not quite an ellipse. Okay, like an ellipse is something different, but like it's optical. Okay, not it's, eclipse, elliptical. Not, <laughs> yeah, but like that feels wrong. Hold on, let me grab my book. Literally right here, riveting stuff. Okay. As usual, this show has digressed into (laughs) trying to figure out what the word is. So in today's segment for what's the word, we're trying to figure out the word for an oval like shape, I believe. (laughs) Yeah, optical, optical, I don't know how to say it. That's the thing is I'm like, I I know what the word looks like. It's like epileptic, E-P-P, because it's ecliptic plane. So it's like those planes have to do with it. And then it's just like where we're at in our rotation, like where the earth is and the rotation's axis and then where the moon is. So it like moves in that. I can um, see that. Elliptical? If it's elliptical, then like, you know, at certain points during its journey, it'd be closer to earth than at others. So at certain points, depending on like where it is and where we are or the sun, you know, like, um, it might be like a full moon when it's like far away. It might be a full moon when it's really close. So yeah, I can see how. It, and yeah, I guess like elliptical is the right word, but I feel like I'm saying it wrong because the period and like the rotation and the revolution is not perfectly circular. It's sometimes closer to the earth than it is further away. So depending on where we are in the rotation of the earth, And then where the moon is in the period, it'll appear far closer in certain aspects than further away. So like last night, looking down south east, it looked super, super close. Like I felt like I was like I could go and touch it. Obviously, I couldn't. But I was like, oh, if I just like went that way, I would hit it. See, I blame those like scientific models of like the solar system um, for like, because like those are all based on like circles, like the physical ones, because like there might be a way for them to like make models that are ecliptical in nature. 
but mm-hmm. a lot of them just are, you know, they're on a wire and it's like X distance. So like it makes a circle. So I think in my head, it, you know, makes a circular orbit around the earth, mm-hmm. but you know, of course it doesn't necessarily have to. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's like the detriment of like simplifying science is that like, if it's simplified too much, then that's what we know, but that's not accurate. So you're like, oh yeah, it's a circular revolution. It's like, well, it's not. Yeah. Like it's not like the same distance away from the earth at any given time. It can be closer to the earth or further away. Well, I don't think it's just because like it's simplified, say like in eighth grade science class. I just think it's because like the limitation and probably the budget for those little solar system models. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know if he was able to create something that has like a elliptical path. But, you know, it seems like that would definitely be more expensive than like mm-hmm. the circ- cheap circular ones they have. Yeah, like. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, I agree with that. That it would probably be more expensive to not have it just be. But that, again, is like simplifying it yeah. in an inaccurate way with budget constraints and things like that. I suppose. I guess the result is simplification, but I don't think it's like purposely simplified, say, for like digestibility. Mm-hmm. I've been talking about that a lot in one of my uh, philosophy classes. It's like if simplification is like a good thing or a bad thing or if it's like the final answer yeah i think Mm -hmm. trying to assign good and bad to a lot of things this is kind of a arduous and futile task for sure but that's philosophy for you that's philosophy we only have two components or two boxes good and bad and we gotta sort the universe (laughs) it's it's kind of how it goes though because it's like is this valid or not like if it like they're like trying to live in the shades of gray can be really complex and philosophy is like how do we simplify because yeah we've been talking about simplification but like it does do you remember in like middle school and like middle school i don't think as much in high school like where like teachers would mark your problem wrong like say like a fraction if you didn't simplify it oh yeah that used to like piss me off um i remember in sixth grade like we brought it up to our math teacher and you know, you know, why, why do we have to simplify? And he then said, you know, I'll do, try to find out why, if there's any valid reasons why we should simplify. And he sent the question to like one of the math organizations in like the state of Wisconsin. And there was like this giant email chain he showed us where there's like all these like doctorates in mathematics oh and like all these people that have, you know, a million letters after their last name or whatever. And mm-hmm. the result was there really isn't a good reason why we simplify. <laughs> At least in math. Yeah. Well, because like you get to a certain point where it's just like a tedious way to answer. Like it's just adding in unnecessary steps because people know that like three nines, like you can conceptually understand what that means and that that, that, that's equal to one third without having to have someone else do that for you. Yeah. In terms of answering a problem. And like I've definitely adopted the opinion while doing math. It's like, I'm not going to do any extra work. It's like. But then in philosophy, since they hold equal weight of three ninths and one third being equal, then it would be which one's the best answer, which would be the simplest answer. But which one's simplest? Because if we're looking at like nine things, then wouldn't three ninths be simpler to understand than one third? Well, I was just going to say, I think there's an argument for utility by using, like, say, um, there's been arguments that we should use currency based on, like, 12, because then it's easily divided by, like, three and four. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, there's arguments where, like, you know, four twelves is better than three nines, because, like, you divide twelves into fours and thirds. Or, like, for example, like, I've been doing, like, GRE stuff, and um, if... I have a, if I want to divide like a half into a third, it'd be helpful to first do the half as like three, six, and then like take away Mm -hmm. a six. So then it's, you know, two, six. So then it's like, you know. Because the difference between the two is one, six. Yeah. So like having it in a more complex state seems to be useful. So it's not necessarily bad. Yeah. That, that would be like the question of like, which one's simpler, which is what we're talking about in philosophy. Like actually... Maybe the one that we're not told to keep it at is simpler. It gives more information in the same standard. Because if three-ninths 
equals one third, then which one's giving more information about the situation at hand? Or like, yeah, well, two sixths. Versus- I don't know if simpler would be the right word to describe that. I would say that maybe like in that situation, if you had like nine apples and like three of them are red, um, yes, there was more information like in the three out of nine, but I don't, I won't describe that as simple. I would just say that it's more information dense or I don't know, more informative. And then, so just parsing words, you know, as usual. Yeah. (laughs) Which I also think is kind of a problem in like my philosophy class, because like my professor would say that like, they mean the same thing. He'd be like, oh no, like you're trying to like say they're not the same, but like they're the same. Simple and information dense. Yes. Oh no, I would definitely say that you wouldn't say that but like that would be my professor's uh, response to fine. That. make an argument where the, the saying context. something is simple it means that it's full of information i think those are very contradictory words and statements mm-hmm. and like you know i think linguistically it's wrong that that's the whole arguments in philosophy because someone yeah. else would say they're not and that like if you can have information density in its simplest form that would be the most logical way to understand the or to give the knowledge okay well i have a bone to pick with your philosophy professor then so give me their name give me their address (laughs) i'm going to show up at their house and argue with them about (laughs) i'm I'm sure he'd love that oh i have no doubt there's nothing more a philosopher loves than a fight not wrong it's the um, fact that, like, in one of my answers, I said that the best argument given pro something was by the guy who was very against it. I'm like, he actually gave the best pro argument in his argument against. <laughs> Professor was like, I like that angle. I'm like, it's true. The pro pro argument did not give any leeway for positivity. So it was like, this is correct, and there's no other logical. And you're like, that's not correct, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun stuff, you know, living the dream. You know what else is a dream of mine? What are your dreams, Sabrina? Tell me about all your hopes I, and aspirations and dreams. I want to be on a game show. You want to be on a game show? <laughs> of course. Is this your attempt at a segue? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. But, like, honestly, I do want to be on a game show. Like- <laughs> But no, I've loved game shows since I was little. Um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire What is a dream show of mine. I don't even know if it's running right now, but I still want to be on it. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Weakest Link, Jeopardy. Oh my Let's God. make a deal. Let's make a deal. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> Here, I'm going to stop my video because it says that my internet connection is unstable. <laughs> Uh-oh. There we go. Wow. It's truly the way I like to see you anyway. What color, uh, this is a side question. What color do you think that box is? Orange. Oh, it shows up as orange for you. Interesting. It shows up as like a bluish purple for me. Uh, oh, I thought it was like a guessing game. I'm not. Can you see the I box to... or no? <sighs> um, I probably hide myself. Um... Yeah, I definitely don't. Oh, um, yeah, that box is, I would say, well, it's a light blue, maybe, dare I say, cerulean. Ooh, that's fancy. Um, I, if I, I believe I'm correct in saying that, like, cerulean is, like, the blue color from, like, Devil's Wear Prada. Yes. Or cyan? Was it cyan or cerulean? No, cyan is... Not cyan? No, n- Science to pedestrian. Fair. Okay. Well, that wasn't the color I wanted you to say, but I'll explain that later. What was your reaction when I said orange? <laughs> I was like, well, because I, I, I've i seen the color as orange. Like, I, I was in class earlier and somebody's thing was that. And I was like, oh, maybe it's a different color for you. Like, I was. Oh, see, I like, I didn't have it up. So I was like doing like a mental image. I'm just like, well, I think like when you're talking, like it has like an orange box around it. So like, that's what I was guessing was orange. But yeah, I'm going to go back to just seeing you. That's good. Whatever works. When we normally do this and like, I do have my camera on. I hide myself. So I don't constantly look at myself. Oh, I'm just always looking at myself. (laughs) But no, don't you want to be on a game show? Um... 
Not really. One, like, I don't really, I think most game shows are designed to make you look dumb. And I don't really want um, video of that existing for perpetuity. And then, I don't know, maybe like, let's make a deal or something like that. But like, I don't know, Wheel of Fortune or maybe like Family Feud. I don't know. I Some game shows I'm okay with, but a lot of like more recent game shows, I don't know if they, I guess maybe they're competition shows. So like, um, the mass dancer, the mass singer, the mass gay, like, um, let's see that, that, that'd be like <laughs> M-A-S-C. <laughs> M-A-S-C, yeah, mass. Yeah, um, That's true. <laughs> I just like, I'm so over those. So it's just like, n- not a fan. Trash. I... <laughs> trash, bad trash. Well, um... Yeah, I used to watch Dancing with the Stars a lot because it was kind of just on because we were an ABC family. You know, I feel like every family has, like, the preferred, like, big network they watch. So it's like, does your family watch CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox? Like, which one is, like, what's on the TV from, like, 5 to 10? And my family was ABC. So, like, our morning show was Good Morning America, not the Today Show, not any of the other shows. It was Good Morning America, Live with Regis and Kelly, The View. That was that. Um, so because of that, I watched Dancing with the Stars a lot. Mm. See, I don't know if my family has, like, uh, like, favorite channel um maybe at one point we did like back when like we had like cable but like now it's like hulu so like we watch Mm -hmm. um like for evening news we watch like cbs with norm mcdonald or norm mcdonald yeah and then like i think we go to like tbs afterwards because like my parents both like the big bang a lot so we watch like big bang until (laughs) they go to bed (laughs) Well, and that's how my uh, family kind of became, especially on the days where the shows that were on ABC my family didn't like. So then we would turn to, like, the reruns of other shows, which would then be, like, watching Big Bang Theory. So then we kind of were watching more CBS, but it was, again, only, like, the new episodes of Big Bang Theory. Otherwise, like, it was old episodes of Big Bang from TBS or... Like nothing, but it was always ABC News. Mm. It's our news choice. What about local news? Did you guys watch like the CBS local news yeah, station? Yeah, like News Channel Eight. That was mm-hmm. ours. What one did you guys watch? Uh, WXOW News Channel Nineteen, which was on Channel Nine, which I never really understood. Mm. But I don't have like a super strong impression of like that news channel. But um, the one thing, like, there was a guy who interviewed me, like, when I got the board position, and we showed up at the interview both wearing, like, the same outfit. It was, like, <laughs> um, kind of like a khaki green, like, tight pants, and then, like, a white dress shirt. <laughs> so Ooh. that was funny, and he was gay, so that was interesting. And then, like, I found him on, like, Facebook. It was, like, messaging him. And then he just like ghosted me. Ooh. I, I guess it wasn't interesting. It was just like, I took offense to that. <laughs> Maybe there was like too much of a connection and he was like, this I don't think it's that. He was just was probably like, this kid's young, way younger than me, whatever. But I have since seen him around like lacrosse and it's just like kind of awkward. <laughs> I matched with someone on a dating app that was a news 19 guy. And he had just started there. And, like, it was really funny because we had matched and we were talking for a bit. I don't think we ever ended up meeting up because, like, my schedule was crazy. His schedule was whatever. And it was really, like, bizarre to, like, be watching the news. And then he was there. Because I'm like, I have that guy's Snapchat. That is bizarre. <laughs> I hope he's doing well. I don't. I don't know. Kind of fell wishing off. him the best. <laughs> wishing him the best. 
what percent of like people you connect with like on dating apps do you think you end up going on dates with not a lot it's like I don't know I look through and I'll have like so many matches like right now I just I deactivated my tinder and I reset my bumble so right now on bumble I'm like I messaged maybe like a hundred guys first because that's what you have to do. So like I made over a hundred matches, right? I message all of them first right away. And then I get a response from like two thirds of them. And then from that first response, I reply from that two thirds, I reply to like half of them. And then it slowly dwindles down to like maybe five guys that I'm talking to. And then out of those five, I will Probably currently, I will probably meet up with none of them because hmm. none of them have impressed me enough for me to be like, I want to spend time with you. Yeah, see, like, I haven't done like a nice round sample size of like a hundred, but mm-hmm. I would say I get like on Tinder, I get like a decent like match rate, and then like I'll if I'm really interested, I will message them, but a lot of times I don't. And then, like, sometimes the message, it just, like, <laughs> drops off dramatically from there. I'm just, like, I have to be very interested to yeah. be, like, message with you and, like, do that several times. And then... On Tinder, I definitely don't message everyone. Like, oh, my gosh, on Tinder, I had so many matches. And then from those, like, maybe only a third would message. And then it would be, like, maybe only a half of those third I would, like, respond to. And then maybe one or two of them would go well. But, like, in general, I feel like it's, like, one out of every ten I'll probably – I might meet up with. And then out of, like, the one out of every ten, so out of that 10%, maybe, like, half of that. So 5% total, I'm in tra- – like, I continue dating or I go on multiple dates with. And then one of those guys out of those five – out of that 5%, one, one singular one will break my heart over that course of six months or what have you that it took me to find him. And then I restart. Yeah. So. Do you ever worry that like you're missing the one in the pile of like matches you don't like sift through? All the time. That's the one thing with Bumble that I kind of like is it like forces me to message people. So then at least like then they have to like – you have to message within 24 hours. They have to respond within 24 hours. And then you can kind of go from there. So it like forces you to like have that conversation. I worry the most that I'm missing out on people in real life because I'm like scared to like take that chance because I'm like, oh, maybe I can just find them on the dating app. But that's like or I could just like not be a little bitch <laughs> in person. What about you? Do you feel like you're missing out on people? That you're missing all the one? time. This is, you know, what keeps me up at night. <laughs> this, like, <laughs> Mr. Wright is probably already in my Tinder messages. I just don't know who it is. <laughs> I, right? Actually, well, the greater chance is that he's like in my new matches thing from two years ago and I still haven't messaged him. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too is like, and that's kind of why I like restarted because I'm like, all of this is old or I'm not getting like, The freshness, because sometimes you just have to, like, rematch with someone and then, like, you can form a conversation or it, like, goes better. Hasn't happened yet, but I've had that happen before where it's, like, a new match will reconnect, like, an old flame. And then I'm like, oh, okay, this is fun. But, yeah, I'm constantly worried that I'm, like, just missing the, like, perfect guy and, like, the perfect timing and all of it going exactly the way it needs to. really is an issue. See, and, like, another issue is, like, it's really hard to screen on Tinder um, because, Mm -hmm. like, most people give very little information. So I have no information to plug into my spreadsheet to figure out, you know, his score. (laughs) So it's like, I would say Tinder. (laughs) Your score. I would say that, like, 90% of Tinder is just, like, attractiveness and, like, you know, that's, like, a very shallow way to date. (laughs) Oh, for sure. Unless I want to, like, message all of them to extract information. I think that's one of the reasons that, like, Bumble is nice or Hinge because it does, like, 
for us more information. Hinge asks so many yeah. questions. Like your base profile on Hinge has so much information about you, but I don't really like any of the guys I've seen on Hinge, like locally. Like anytime I'm on it, I'm not super impressed with them. Um and Tinder, well, one, I got banned with my phone number. So when I recreated a Tinder, I had to use like a super, like I had to really like dive deep for it. And then I was like, this isn't worth it. So then I just deactivated it. I'm like, I'll just use Bumble until I feel completely dead inside. And then I'll go to Tinder. My sister has been banned on Tinder like five times. I'm just like, how do you keep getting banned from Tinder? It's like, what are you doing? You're obviously doing something wrong. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I one night, like I went to bed and then I woke up and it was banned. I was like, what did I do? I don't even. Well, I've been on Tinder for before I was even like 18. So. Well, I had been on Tinder since I was 18 and I just got banned this summer. So I have no idea what I did. No idea. Like, I've been on Tinder since it started. I think yeah. it, like, started right around the same time that I turned 18. It was, like, it became a big thing. I saw there was, like, this new dating app where you draw, like, a picture. And, of course, these pictures are, like, terrible. It's basically, like, Microsoft Paint. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you scroll through and then, like, you select a picture and you start messaging these people. I'm just, like... I get that you don't want like the dating app to be based on like solely looks, but like, I just feel like that's a stupid way to date. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be like, Oh wow. Your turtle looks less terrible than all the other turtles. I'm definitely going to message you. And like, also you need to be attracted to someone. Like, I don't care what your personality, like I do care what your personality is like, but like I need to like the truth comes out Sabrina only cares about your looks <laughs> I need to be attracted to you to like want to talk to you and then like it can go from there because it's like uh, the personality I want in a guy in a guy I don't find attractive is disgusting to me I'm like no but the personality I like in a guy and a guy I'm attracted to I'm like sign me up and then a personality I hate and a guy I'm attracted to I'm like Mm, it's fine. I'm not here for that. And then he just gets written off for like a different need than a <laughs> romantic relationship, which is just as satisfying. <laughs> it sounds like you have a whole system there. I do. And I'm fully aware that I am the fuck boy. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, attractiveness is super important. Like if I'm not initially attracted to you, it's not worth it. But also, like, there's, like, the baseline of physical attractive, and then, like, that kind of ebbs and flows as you get to know someone. So someone could be, like, they're okay, and then as you get to know them, they could be, like, oh, they're so hot, or they could go to, like, they're so ugly, and it's really just about getting to know someone. Um. <laughs> You're, like, yeah, okay. Do you have, like, any big um, news or life changes? since last week <laughs> no i mean i'm just like more committed to the crushes i have on boys that aren't going anywhere but outside of that she's doubling down i got nothing i am i <laughs> well so like i have a crush on one of my regulars at work <laughs> okay and everyone knows about this crush it's not a big deal i'm sure he knows to some extent but um Last time I saw him, he was talking about how he's throwing, like, a party. And he was like, oh, well. And it was really awkward because he's like, wouldn't you want to go? And I'm like, am I being invited? Like, what's going on here? And he's like, well, I don't I don't know what. At that. And he was really awkward. And then I was, like, laughing. So it was just like, well, if you want me to go, you need to invite me. And I was like. But also it's on a Saturday, so I will be working. <laughs> um, and then I was like, but I don't work on Sundays. So if you throw a party on a Sunday, count me in. And he was like, he just kind of looked at me and I was like, just saying, just throwing it out there. <laughs> See, Sabrina, you need to learn the art of throwing like softballs. So, <laughs> what do you mean? So like, 
um, if your guy's like an all-star hitter, or like he's a 10 out of 10 on attractiveness and super confident, whatever, mm-hmm. I'm sure that he could like banter with you quite well. And this like, you know, I would say like with other guys, you need to like give them like softball. So like show them inclinations that you're interested. So then like that boosts their confidence a little bit. So then like they will like go for it. So I'm saying that you need to give them like a little push. So it's like when he asks, like, hey, do you, um, I, I'm going to this party. Or like, how did he like start it? So he's throwing a party. And he was just kind of, he just, he like, was like, wouldn't you want to go? Do you want to go? And I was like, wait, are you inviting me to this party? And okay. Yeah. So pause. But it's hard. Pause. It's complicated. Pause. Oh. Pause. <laughs> Sorry. So at that point, what you need to do is just like say, see, I had it. <laughs> Be like, are you inviting me? <laughs> and they kind of like raise your eyebrows and smile. So like to show that you're interested. So I was like, are you inviting me? That's what I did. I was, and then like. That's genuinely what I did. Hmm. I was like, oh, are you inviting me? Okay. Not that he can see my face because I'm in a mask, but I think what's like complicated and he like vaguely mentioned it and was like, correct, is that like, because I'm at work, like I have to have a layer of niceness to like everyone. So then it's him trying to figure out like, is she being nice to me because she likes me or is is this like her rapport with like everyone who comes in regularly, you know? And I'm like, so that's. And I was like, yeah, so I was like, I don't know how to answer that because I also don't want to make you uncomfortable with coming in while I'm here, regardless okay. of if I like you or not. So there's like that dynamic well, I to guess. it. Um, I would say step two then is physical touch. So like if you didn't get the hint there and like a nice, like um, easy way to do that is if like you're handing something to someone. It's um, so like. If you're handing them your credit card, you can kind of like mm-hmm. grab it, but like go like too far and then just kind of like grab their hand or love that idea. <laughs> Definitely get where you're going. We are in the middle of a pandemic. Okay, grab the card. Touching is hard. <laughs> <laughs> grab their card, go and back, <laughs> grab some Lysol, like <laughs> get some Purell, like. You know, there's workarounds for this to bring in the stop making excuses. I try with all my body language to be as like close to him as like I is comfortable. Like, but again, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So it's like I can only be so close. Um, and I have to be like respectful, but I try my darndest to like see him and say hi and be interactive. And he also came in last night. Yeah, he came in later than he normally did. So it was just like an interesting dynamic. But it was good. I was like, oh, okay, what's what's happening? So we'll see how that progresses. Does he usually come in alone? Yes, um, mostly. Sometimes he'll have like a friend with him. He's come in. He'll come in a handful of times like with a friend. He's done that a couple times. One And one time he came in with a friend and I said hi because I hadn't said hi in like the last couple of weeks because my schedule had been all off. And when he like introduced me to his friend, his friend made a comment about like how he's like been told about me. And I was like, oh, so you talk about me? And I died inside. But then he like kind of played it off and he's like, well, I talk about like all the people here that I know, you know, and it's like, oh, we're going to go to Buffalo Wild Wings. No, he he's doesn't. Like, no, he's he like, doesn't. oh, yeah, I mentioned you. I mentioned Nathan. I mentioned Brandon. Like I mentioned all no, these he people. No, he doesn't. That's how I felt. I was like, uh-huh. I'm liar, go liar, die. pants on fire. Um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> So he's definitely interested. Um, like, well, when he comes in alone, you could like sit across the table from him while you take his order, just like sit in the booth or, you know, the chair is like, okay, what do you want? So then. Yeah, that's Brandon's move. Let's see, the guys know where it's at. <laughs> is that like just to be friendly or does he do that with like guys he's interested in? I think that's just how he is. Like, he's, I mean, I'll like sit down a lot at like booths, like if 
but like if everyone's like on the same side like i'll sit across from them to take their order or like i'll try to be level with them um but you know brandon's just like so comfortable yeah i also am not usually uh this guy's server because he sits in the bar and i'm not usually very um unless it's like okay anyway well well, (laughs) even doubling down on guys um i decided well it started with I think it was like on Sunday or something. I mm-hmm. was somehow got on the topic of the LSTAT and was oh, thinking about taking it. And then, cause you know, I have, you know, all these months until school starts again. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, well, I don't know if I want to take it. And then like, I decided that I want to take the GRE instead. And mm-hmm. there's, well, oh, it started because I was thinking about doing like a joint. Oh, I know exactly how it started now. Let me rewind. So it started on Sunday when I sent you the article about, um, you know, how to make money or whatever. Yeah. It was like a New York Times opinion article and it was so pretty stupid. basic advice, but sometimes it's good to remember the fundamentals. It was talking <laughs> about how like 30% or maybe it was like 50% of lawyers are in like the top 1%. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should get a law degree. So I was looking at joint PhD, econ and JD programs. And I'm like, oh, okay. But I would probably have to take the LSAT. So I was looking at the LSAT and I decided to take a practice test. And then, but then I was was looking and a lot of joint programs take the GRE. And then more and more um, law schools are also accepting the GRE. Interesting. So I sense like GRE is for you, like econ, a lot of like general social studies stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'll take the GRE and the joint programs will accept it. And some law schools will also accept it. So I've been studying for the GRE. Interesting. That's exciting. I think you mentioned that earlier, and I was going to, like, grab onto that and be like, so how hard are we studying right now? But that's exciting. It's good to, like, look at those things, especially if it's something you want to be doing. Practice exams and stuff are helpful. Yeah. I mentioned the GRE during, like, the when you were talking about the math, because I said I was yeah. doing, like, GRE math. Mm-hmm. That, I hate math. I hate it all. Yeah. Well, the nice thing is like the GRE like only tests like quantitative reasoning, so math and verbal reasoning, like so reading. Well, I guess it also has like the writing section, but like it's like compared to like say like, the LSTAT that has like logic games and some other stuff, it's like pretty simplistic. And it's so it's like it seems like it's a good way to or something easy to study for. That's good. That's helpful. Yeah. So. I keep being like, I don't know if I'm going to take the LSAT, but then I keep taking classes that I'm taking specifically to help my brain be able to process the LSAT. So I'm like, should I just admit out loud that I want to go to law school? I don't. I'm still like not there yet, though. I think it's time for you to fully commit, Sabrina. It's time to lock in. But I still have like two years. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I have like two years too, but like the reason I decided to like take the GRE versus now lot. versus like next summer, mm-hmm. oh, do you only have like a year and a half? Yeah. It was like I said, I have two years, but I'm like, actually I have technically a year. Like I could still graduate by next spring. So yeah. But how do, I guess you also think about like how it aligns with like application cycle. Exactly. Yeah. So, and like, anyways, I want to yeah. take a year off anyway, cause that's kind of my MO. So <laughs> Just take a year to refresh. Exactly. Refresh, re- make money, move there if I have to in order to get better tuition. True. Yeah. Well, and as I was saying, like the reason I decided to take it now versus like in like a year, I'm like, well, now I have all this like free time and I'm not going to have next year, I'm going to have way more stuff on my plate. It's like now's probably the best time. So that's why. That's smart. Yeah. And of course, I want to get a really high score. So the time helps. Of course. Of course. Yeah, for sure. Doesn't everyone? <laughs> yeah, right. No, I just want to get like a middle score, like a middle low. Yeah, you- I'm hoping for like, you know, 45th percentile, like, you know, almost average. Almost. Below average. Yeah, like I'm almost average, like still below. Of course. That makes the most sense, obviously yeah um and i was looking at like schools that have like joint phd on um, jd programs and i saw that stanford has it i'm like ooh, stanford sun warm stanford like, that's what i want i have going to school in california 
Is Stanford warm? Like it is California, but it's like up more upper California. It's in the Bay Area. So like it's not like Southern California, but like I think it's better than Wisconsin. Like they're um I looked at the weather, like their colds are warmer than us, but their like highs aren't as high. Cause like the being like in the Bay Area, like it's just like the water kind of keeps the temperature fairly even. Just like their summer isn't as hot, but their winters aren't as cold. I like, see, you say it's in the Bay Area and I'm like, oh yeah, that's correct. But like in my mind, I never put it in the Bay Area. I don't know why. Like I always put Stanford like further north than that. Yeah, I think it's like pretty low on the Bay Area. Like yeah, kind of like where the Bay Area like starts to connect with the mainland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just like looked at the map and I was like, oh yeah, it definitely is like bay area but in my mind i always put it like further north and i don't know why i don't know why either i don't know bitch don't know oh i also finally made an appointment to see my doctor and got adhd meds so love that so it all took me like four months to like i think call to make an appointment (laughs) and then they're like I'm like, I'm a feel whenever. And they're like, oh, are you free tomorrow? <laughs> and you're like, yep, let's do this. So it was like four months to get an appointment that I could have got. So I could have taken care of this like so long ago. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, that's exciting. So do you have it? Is it like, is it like 10 milligrams, 5 milligrams? Yeah, I'm on 5 milligrams. Ooh, click clack. Exciting. Well, we'll have to follow your journey and see how the medication <laughs> hits. We know my yeah, journey is I'm a- normal. Yeah. What doses are you on? I have 10 milligrams, three pills a day. So 30 a day total. My current space. I might go up. So I have a, this is so boring. I have my yearly physical in April which is annoying because like to schedule the month because like I was doing monthly appointments with my doctor to like go over how my prescription was doing those easy enough to do per month but like to schedule a physical because of the way the scheduling works in their system they were like oh yeah you have to go a month and a half out and I was like this is stupid um so yeah, that'll be in April is when I'll have that. And I'll probably see about if I can get like a higher dosage or like, I don't know, but I like having so many pills because I get 90 pills a session. See, have you talked about getting like an extended release? I, the first ones I tried were extended release and they were really bad on my anxiety. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Cause it would just like that like second wave would like hit badly because like my come down heightens my anxiety and like what I need opposite of my come down is more like I like my come down like I need to be at my like I need to go back to neutral first before I can like pick up again and the extended release doesn't allow that so like my anxiety just like goes like super high and it's awful you know what else is weird about um daily things I take I take a a gummy vitamin and it is not vegan. It's gluten free. It's everything else, but it is not vegan. It's made with beef fat. And I was like, that is crazy. Oh, I was gonna say it's made like with gelatin. So like not even gelatin. Oops. Like it's like it's beef fat. And I was like, that is a crazy aspect to have in this, but okay. Yeah, because most gummies aren't vegan. Hmm. Interesting. Fun fact of the day. Fun fact of the day. Are you ready to talk some astrology? Ooh, baby, am I? So, (laughs) talking about these stars fucking us up. Mercury, which is not a star, it's a planet, um, is transition is coming. It's coming out of Aquarius into Pisces here on the 15th. So, about a week and a half away from where we're at now, but very close Uh, Mercury has to do with your communication with others, your communication with self. Moving from Aquarius to Pisces is not going to change a whole lot in terms of the the conversations we're having or where you're feeling your conversations are going, but it is going to change what type of answers you're going to be getting. A lot of times with Aquarius, um, when 
Mercury is in Aquarius, we see a lot more about um, kind of flightier answers or like not really getting answers, the skirting around things, the awkwardness, kind of just like you're talking about things that matter, but you're not getting to like the depths of it or really getting like answers because you're kind of in that air zone. You're going from like one place to another versus once we get into Pisces, we're more into the water. It's more like you're going deeper and like actually like if you're not getting resolution, you're continuously asking for and hopefully finally receiving resolution a bit more. So that's going to be nice once Mercury gets moved uh over we should see that shift slowly happening for a lot of the communications we're having hmm. okay we can hope i mean i can hope hopefully my double down crush will uh finally get some answers <laughs> i hate having crushes i feel like a 12 year old but it's fine on that note do you want to learn about your horoscope Sure. All right. So things that the stars are telling Cooper is that he needs to stay in his routine, keep head down, constant grinding, you know, sticking in that system of routine, whether that's a workout regimen or you're waking up in the morning, what you're doing every day, all of that kind of stick in the routine, keep the routine going. It's definitely working out for you. There are signs of positivity in work life. So things that you're desiring in work, business opportunities will be coming for you. We should be seeing that mm. sooner rather than later. Um, For your romantic life, love is going to be coming as you find the connections. Like you are going to be finding connections and you really have to like grow it and nurture it in a way that maybe you haven't been before. You'll be seeing like newer connections or sustained connections kind of growing in such a way that we haven't been looking at lately. Uh, one of the fun things I found out, like I, this is from the horse horoscopes I looked at today. That I was just like, that's kind of weird. Cause I went to somewhere different. Cause I don't come up with these on my own. Cause I'm not that good. Uh, is it gave me a couple things that you need to be looking for or good luck things. And one of them is a color. This is why I asked earlier about your tile color. Because the color that you should be looking for is indigo. And mm. not that the color is indigo. I wouldn't go that far to be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely an indigo. But it has indigo vibes to it. It has like that blue and that purple kind of fusion that I think. Okay, so look for a guy wearing indigo. Yeah, or just like positivity in indigo. It's showing up places, you know, things like that. Um, also look for D's, so a guy with a D in his name. Um, and then the numbers 7 and 14. Mm. Multiples of 7. Uh, yeah. Ooh, look at you. So what do the stars say about you? For me, um, it actually talked about school which i thought was interesting because yours had no mention of academic life but mine did um well that makes sense yeah right it was like oh that's kind of a cool like note of life to put in uh school it said like exciting things are happening or like academic trajectory is going well which i'm like i guess like my grades are fine but they're not like to my standard i guess um i have financial success kind of in the air that like Keeping finances as they're going is going to be working out for me, which is positive. I've made some good money. I'm not, I took off tonight, which I'm excited about just to kind of have a night really to myself because I don't really have schoolwork to do. I can just kind of settle and like have a night in as my goal. Um, but financially, I'm good. Um, and then I'm also having mood swings, I guess, which is every day of my life. <laughs> I was like, this isn't anything new. But um, not letting my moods affect the relationships I'm having with people and to not be hung up on or stay in fights or arguments that I have with others. So we'll see that. Um. My color is coffee, which I find interesting because this morning when I woke up, 
I could not focus. I started my class and was like, I need to make my coffee. So I like, I actively made coffee this morning, which normally if I make coffee, it's because I have time to. It's not necessarily something that like I will just do when I'm doing something else. Like I probably would have done it after my class was done. But this morning I was like, I can't wait. Like I need it immediately. Um, Not that that's the thing. But I feel like my coffee looks like the color that I would put as coffee. I don't know. That feels weird. Um, The letter A, don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, but that's what I'm looking for. And the numbers eight and six. Okay. Eight and six. Mm. Eight point six. Six foot eight. Six foot eight inches. Sounds like the dream guy. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Exciting stuff there. I'm super excited about Mercury's transition. And then after that, we'll have Venus, which I'll talk about more next time. What's our next segment? <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Like answers and stuff. Uh, our best answers, steer dumb questions. Time for that. Yeah. Dumbass questions for us to answer in dumbass ways. Hey. Here's an interesting question. Can a 40-year-old man restore and maintain a relationship with a woman that's 18 degrees younger if they have a past? Um, they had a rocky, obsessive, and addictive relationship. They had the kind of love that is impossible to stop. When he sees her, he loses all control because he loves her so much and is even still gets nervous about her. Um they were together when they were 20 and 38. After two months of dating, he flew her out to California and drove her to museums, the prettiest beaches and piers and restaurants for her 21st birthday. Do we know who the author of this is? Is it the girl or the man? It sounds like it might be like a third person. A third person. Okay, because I'm like, who is our writer here? Um, maybe a concerned friend or brother or something, sister. Um, yeah, it's just from what they said, like, it seems like no, they shouldn't restore their relationship. And like, they go on later, there's more details, but yeah, I would say move on. Um, typically, if a relationship ends and there is such a big age gap, it kind of makes me go, like, why would you want it? continue and making sure that it's like healthy and that people are growing um doesn't mean they can't find each other again but i would definitely um be wary of it being an actually positive and fulfilling relationship on both sides yeah well it's like relationships usually end for a reason sometimes it's just like circumstantial but a lot of times there's contributing factors i think as time passes whether it's like two years in this case or in a month it's like we sometimes forget why we ended things and it's important you know to realize like you know we tried this it didn't work and it seems like from what they said like it wasn't a good kind of relationship so I was just like it's probably not a good idea to go back into that obsessive addictive unhealthy relationship an obsessive relationship is not usually a good one to go back to Here's an interesting one. How genuine do I sound? And could I improve? And this is an apology that he wrote. And it's like he's sending it like over text. And I guess I'm kind of interested on your opinion. Like, do you think long paragraph apologies that I'm not going to read are effective over text? As a chronic long message sender, I don't want an apology over text. Like, we can have a conversation, I can yell at you over text, I can send you I'm sorry for that over text, but anything that's, like, long and, like, trying to apologize, there's too much, like, defense in there. Like, you're either sorry and you're just sorry and it's a blanket I'm sorry, or, like, you're trying to defend yourself and you're putting I'm sorry in front of it and, like. Oh, here's some interesting background information. Um, He's saying the mistake was, I overloaded her with X. But she was ghosting me. I sent her one apology already, but I don't think she really read it. So I guess he's sending her another one. I'm just like... She ghosted you, bruh. Move on. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a nightmare. He was already sending you too many texts. 
then he apologized once for sending all those texts. And now he's sending a second long apology. Just like. He's probably like a really nice guy. Or like, I don't know. That's like red flags to me. It's just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Um, When I say nice guy, I actually like mean like not a nice guy, but like in his head is a nice guy because like. He's not a Chad, but he's like just as bad because he still thinks he has a right to women that he doesn't have, but he thinks he does. It's just like, I think kind of seems like there's a theme. It's just like, you tried it a lot. You sent multiple texts, you bombarded her with texts Mm -hmm. and you're still bombarding her with her texts. Obviously she's not taking the bait. So I think you should, Take that as a sign and move on. Yes. Move on. Go away. Something else. Like, just stop. Yeah, no. The minute it's like, as she's been ghosting me and I just keep messaging her, stop. Stop what you're doing. Walk away. Go far, far away. Yes. Wrap it up. Unlike what I do. All right, let's go. If you enjoyed this episode and want to help keep Bitch Said What going, consider joining our Patreon. You can join through the link in the show notes. If you want to share your thoughts and opinions on today's topic, or just say hi to me and Cooper, connect with us on social media. Our social handles are posted in the show notes. Um, if, if you enjoyed this episode, consider giving Bitch Said What a rating or review. We would love your feedback, and ratings help the podcast grow. Until next time, stay thirsty. Love it. Uh, Okay. I need a nap. Oh.